Hey guys, today we are going to look at linear regression. We're going to answer the question, what is linear regression and how can I use technology to make predictions from scatter plots? So linear regression basically is a way to do the line of best fit with technology so that it is accurate, so that we're not having to freehand it. So I find this easiest to do on TI-84 calculators. This right here that I have pulled up is the app called Calculate 84. It's this little pink one. And um, it, it's going to look a little bit different than the TI-84s do, but it does the same thing. So let's talk about what the correlation coefficient is first. This is something that your calculator will tell you. It is the letter R. And it measures the sign and the strength of the correlation between two variables. So R is going to be a number between negative one and positive one. So if it's a negative number, then the data is going to be trending down. And if it's a positive number, the data is going to be trending up. The closer that you are to negative one or to positive one, the stronger that that correlation is. And then if you're in between negative 0.9 and negative 0.7 or 0.7 and 0.9, then that is moderate. It's pretty strong. And then anything below 0.7, we would consider weak. So when your calculator tells you that R value, it's for the correlation coefficient, and it's just measuring the sign and the strength of the correlation. So linear regression, I talked about that a little bit already. It is the process for finding the line of best fit to model a set of bivariate data. And we do it with the graphing calculator because it's more accurate. So here are the steps to finding the line of best fit. The first thing that we need to do is tell our calculator we want to see R, the correlation coefficient. We have to turn the diagnostics on by going to mode. And then we're gonna go to stat diagnostics and make sure that that is on. So the mode key, is right there to the right of the second key. And then I'm gonna go down to stat diagnostics. Again, if you're on an actual TI, this might look a little bit different than mine. And I'm gonna make sure that it's on. I'm gonna hover over to on and hit enter. Okay, so it's on. So after we make sure that the stat diagnostics are on, the next thing we're going to do is enter the data, which we will go to the stat key to do that. And then we will hit enter. And then an L1 is where you'll put your X values. L2 is where you'll put your Y values. And then you will do stat, arrow over to calc, and go down to four and hit enter to calculate that line of best fit equation and the correlation coefficient. We'll go over that again a little more slowly when we do that. Let's take a look at number one though. It says match the graphs to the following correlation coefficients. So I have two negative graphs or I'm sorry, I have one negative graph and two positive graphs. So I already know that the negative number is going to go with the negative graph. So this one would be negative 0.98, which makes sense because that's negative data and that correlation is pretty strong. Then we have 0.67 and 0.92. So 0.67 is going to be not as strong and then 0.92, that's gonna be a pretty strong correlation. So this second one would be 0.67 since it's moderately strong, but this last one is definitely a stronger correlation. So that would be 0.92. Okay, let's look at number two. It says the table shows the weight in pounds of an alligator at various weeks since it was born. What is the correlation coefficient? What does it mean? So I need to enter this data into the calculator so it can tell me the correlation coefficient. So I'm going to let weeks be X. That's the independent that will determine the weight. So the way we get to enter this into the calculator is by clicking the stat key. Let's go ahead and go back to home, second quit. So stat key, enter, and then an L1 is where I'm going to put all of the X values. So 0, 9, 18, 27, 34, 43, and 49. And then an L2 is where I'm gonna put all the Y values, 6, 8.6, 10, 13.6, 15, 17.2, and 19.8. Okay, so I have the data in. 
I've entered the data. Now I'm going to do the stack key arrow over to calc, then go down to four for linear regression. So stat arrow over to calc for calculate. And we're going to go down to four. We want it to calculate linear regression. And then I'm going to hit enter on your calculator. It might say calculate. So there is the slope, the a value, since that's the coefficient of X is a slope. So it's about 0.27. The Y intercept is about 5.83. And then we're going to look at that R value. That R value is 0.995. So R equals 0 0.995. And that means it's a very strong, and positive correlation. All right, so next we are going to write the equation for the line of best fit. And since my R value was very close to one, I know that this is going to be a pretty accurate line of best fit. So on my calculator, it told me A and B, which are the slope and the Y intercept. So the equation for the line of best fit would be Y equals, I'm just going to round to the hundredths, 0 0.27 x and then plus 5.82 for the y intercept. And now we're going to use this equation to predict how much the alligator will weigh after 60 weeks. So that is an x value that they gave me because they want us to determine the weight, which is y. So now I'm just going to replace x with 60. So it'll be y equals 0 0.27 times 60 plus 5.82. And I'm just going to put that in the calculator. 0 0.27 times 60 plus 5.82. So after 60 weeks, the alligator would weigh about 22.02 pounds. Okay, number three says the table shows the number of department stores in the United States since 2016. What is the correlation coefficient? What does it mean? So I need to enter this data into the calculator. Let's look at the table though and think about the information that they gave us. So it says since 2016, that is going to be like our Y intercept initial value. So what I'm going to do in the table is I'm going to change 2016 to zero because we are starting at the year 2016. That is like year zero. That's where we're starting to compare it. So 2017 is one year after that. 2018 is two years after that and so on. So that is what I'm going to put into the calculator. I'm changing it just so it makes a little bit more sense. We want the Y intercept to be 7,930 or around there since that's when we're starting comparing. And now I'm going to put this data into the calculator. So we're going to go to stat, enter, and make sure that you do not use the delete key on L1 or L2 because that will delete the entire row. You need to clear and then go down. I don't think this calculator is going to do it. I think that I'm going to have to go through and delete each one individually. That's another option. If you're on a TI-84, you can go up to L1 and L2 and hit clear, but just don't hit delete unless you're underneath L1 and L2 like I just was there. Okay, so now let's enter in this data. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 7,930 for when we started looking at this data, then 7,651, 7,466, 7,163, and 6,297. Okay, then to get the information on it, to find all the linear regression information, we go stat, arrow over to calc, and then down to four, and then hit enter. So there's the slope y intercept and then the r value is negative 0 0.947 is what that would round to. And that means that this correlation is negative 
and it is strong. And then it asks for the equation of the line of best fit. So that would be y equals negative 375.4x plus 8052.2. And then it says predict how many department stores there will be in 2022. 2022 is six years after 2016, which is what we started at. So we would substitute in x equals 6 into our linear regression equation. So I'm going to do that. y will equal negative 375.4 times 6 plus 8052.2. So negative 375.4 times 6 plus 8052.2. So after 6 years in 2022, there will be about, we are going to round that to the nearest whole number because you're not going to have a partial store. So we would say about 5,800 stores. And then it says, what year would you expect there to be 4,000 department stores left? So this time we're going to be solving for the year. They gave us the number of stores, which is Y. So I'm going to use this equation, but I'm going to replace Y with 4,000. So the equation would be 4,000 equals negative 375.4X plus 8052.2. So first thing I need to do is subtract 8052.2 and 4000 minus 8052.2 is negative 4052.2. And then we would divide by negative 375.4. So take that answer and divide it by negative 375.4. And we get x equals, oh, I don't need that second line. It's this one right here. x equals about 11 years. If we're rounding it, that would be about 11 years. So remember, that's 11 years since 2016. So we would do 2016 plus 11 to figure out the number of years. So that would be 2027. So based on that trend in 2027 is when there would be about 4,000 department stores left.